Uh, dark corner, I can't see anything. I need to find a light. Well, I've got a lighter. Can I not pick up the... Well, I guess I can set it on fire, can I? Uh, no, stop, stop it. Alright, set it on fire. Uh, okay, the, the, the stick's on fire. Now I put a gear in here. Mechanism? It should work now. What should work? What is it? Well, it's joined to other things inside here, and the branch just burns forever, amazingly. A rather strange mechanism. Seems to be missing some parts. Well, just put the gear in, and it says it should be working now. Alright, we'll just let that branch burn forever. And I guess we can finally try to open the front door. We can't just jump up here, although in reality we should be able to just kind of pull ourselves up and get onto the balcony. Uh, what is this? A little boulder. Uh, oh, I see. That's a... That must be part of this lock mechanism. Anyway, in the house we go. What can possibly go wrong? All the candles and lamps have been lit. Does someone live here? That looks like blood. So let's avoid that for now. I have, I have a flashlight? I have a flashlight. So we don't have sanity like in any Cthulhu game. So maybe I don't need to worry about that. It's a vase with some flowers in it. Okay. Oddly enough, they haven't voted in the darkness. Oh, a note. Oh, it's a whole older handkerchief. It's in very bad shape. I fear it might crumble in my hands. Well, I can't... It's got something on it, though. I fear it might crumble in my hands. What do you want to do about it? Uh, okay, I'll come back to that. Saw blade, rusty cans, squeaky floor. Ah, uh, oh, it's a lamp. Let's take that, just in case we need, need more light. What is, what is this? Boxes, broken shelves, a broken table. What is... Ah, uh, what is that? Sharp fragment, it looks like the blade of a knife. All these stuck in the table. If I want to take it, I have to hit it with something. Do you guys hear something? Oh, someone's crying. Broken table, the small table is in atrocious state. Luckily I don't need to stop from you, funny guy. Funny. What is this? Drawer? Draw wait a minute. Can I just I got the head. Why can't I why can't I pull the drawer? What is what's going on here? I thought that means I just pull it. Hold on, let me just uh What do I have in my inventory? Stick? Nope. Uh knife? Maybe it's a maybe it's locked. Maybe that's what it means. Let me just get out of there. I need to hit that with something. Can I stick it? Or branch it? Alright. Every night they weep. Every night they weep. Every night they're weeping. So we got a knife blade. I'm not sure how that helps me though. Let me just stick that there. Ah, uh, no. Broken table, drawer. Like, why can't I, like, what, what does that mean? What does the hand mean? The hand means I can pull it, but I can't actually pull it. Cool, there's someone else in here. Oh well, I guess we should, uh, ignore the drawer for now, unless I... I'll just assume I'm missing something, and the game's not glitched. There. What on earth is this? It's like a... It's like a butter thing? Like you churn 
butter in this thing, I think. Could be an old school washing machine. Stockroom door. Five eyes. I don't know if we should brace for a jump scare or not. I think we probably should brace for a jump scare if we go into there. The door there... What is it? Old saw? Unfortunately it's broken. No, I think it's fortunate that the old saw is broken. I think the, uh, the less sharp things in here, the better off we'll be. Decrepit boards... I guess there's stuff underneath here? What is... About seals and their usage. Ah, I should read that. Because... That is probably a seal. Okay, what else do we have? Broken chair... The old saw is not working. I'm quite happy about that, actually. Okay, it's not blood. For some reason the fire is red. Um... What is that? There's like black things on the ground. Is that coal? Charcoal? A lit stove. An old stove. Old wooden stove that's been lit. Is it possible someone else passed through here? Uh, you? I expect to find you. Oh, hi. Wait, that's it? Okay, that's it. Stove door! I can throw stuff in there. There's a pot too, if I want to cook some noodles or something, I can. Um, or make soup out of... Let's not talk about soup right now. Uh, let's go to documents. About seals and their usage. These seals, therefore, if crafted and positioned befittingly, on the doors as explained hitherto, will render it impossible to be opened by those who do not ken the ritual needed to destroy the power and melt the immaterial binds of which the seal is a padlock. It is a manner of putting to the test the resolution, the will, and the intelligence of whoever seeks to break it. In this manner, only those who demonstrate to be worthy of the treasures of knowledge contained beyond that door can access it, and only strength and intelligence used together will be the key to access such treasures and secrets. The rest of this volume will illustrate the manner for melting these seals, including the rituals and the necessary equipment for such an objective. Much will already be known to those who are knowledgeable in alchemy practices or ken the connection between matter and form. But we want to help those who are totally ignorant of such matters oh, that's me. so as to provide a point of departure for those wishing to also conjure harder magic spells and rituals into practice. That's good. Oh look, there it is. Uh, what remains to be described is the seal called that of the Five Eyes. As is kenned by those who know magic and spells, it is one of the most powerful seals one can find and represents the maximum test of value and knowledge for those who try to melt it, because it is intended to safeguard the secrets of the species which raises the most pity in those who are virtuous. Uh, whoever possesses the courage to try will have to use the symbol of the deepest essences and must be willing to make some sacrifices. In fact, after having united the ceremonial knife with the most refined substance of fire, as we have hitherto described, whoever seeks to accomplish the ritual will have to use the knife upon himself to shed the blood in uncontaminated water so that a sort of bridge is created which connects the warm and dry element to a cold and wet one. It is important, however, that to stabilize this connection, a source of sunlight must be present to hit the water with its rays. If, if everything is performed correctly, the seal will melt and the candidate will be capable of seeing the image interpreted as if it were present inside of him as these seals usually do when the preliminary ritual is performed successfully, 
in the particular case of the seal of the five eyes, one must remember that this is destined to contain a source of intimate pain and torment. Oh, fun. Yes, pain and torment. The brave one must recognize the pain of the mother and show pity and compassion through contact with the faces of the innocent. As per rule, the seal provides an incomplete representation which the celebrant must complete, establishing a connection to it, the material world through what he can find externally, near the place where the seal was found, and which forms part of such a place. As demonstration of the proper execution of the rites, the officer will witness a vision. As the struggle of the mother is remembered through the operations described here, he will witness her crying. I don't understand what that means. I don't even know. Okay, well we have, we have the knife, we have the water, we need sunlight, and I, I didn't really get the the other part. Like the uh, I don't understand what happens after we. Okay, the door. Can we open this? It's locked, I need a key for it. We need a key, what is, what is, oh wait, Lucien and Margarita. Okay, there's a lot of reading in this game apparently. We haven't found any keys, right? The key might be in here, a broken door? What is that? Alright, let's read. Lucien and Margarita. In times gone by, youths ventured into the woods to vow their eternal love. Thus, on that day, Lucian the shepherd took Margarita by the hand and led her amongst the trees. Margarita was sweet like the spring, with hair like gold threads, and her hands were as quick in cotton spinning as a nightingale was in flying. For all of this, the shepherd desired her hand in marriage. It was a beautiful October day, and the snow seemed to be yet distant. But after a long walk, and while they were amidst the thick of the woods, the sun was covered by the clouds, and Margarita said, Please, my love, let us return home. A cloud has covered the sun, and if a thousand drops were to fall from the sky, sick we would, we could become you and I. But the shepherd replied, One more step, my love. I have heard the sound of an axe, and I do not want the, those woodcutter ears to eavesdrop our vows. Margarita followed him, and on they walked for a hundred steps more. The sky darkened, and the maiden trembled. She pleaded, Please, my love, let us return home. The cloud is darker, and if a hundred flakes should fall, the path will vanish, and they won't ever find us at all. But the shepherd had seen a hunter several trees away, and he did not want the hunter's eyes to spy on their kisses. He replied, Courage, my dove. One more step. A hundred steps later, a very white light flared far in the distance, and Lucian clenched his beloved's hand more tightly, because he desperately wanted to reach it. Snow had begun to fall, and the young maiden desired to go back. She dragged her feet and pleaded, but Lucian gripped her hand tighter and dragged her. Margarita wept. Please, if you love me, stop and let us try to find the way home. But the young man no longer, ne no longer heeded her. Margarita tried to stop him whilst the light before him, or before them continued to grow. He let go of her hand and proceeded alone. Margarita fell upon the ground while he disappeared into the storm. Thus she gathered all her courage, took her skirt in hand and rushed to stop him because she truly loved him and did not want any harm to befall him. But Lucian, feeling his hands being pulled back, turned around with a face which no longer seemed to be his own, and screamed, Be gone, you jealous harpy, why do you linger still? She is calling me with a voice that nearly a thousand nightingales can match, and here you are calling like a choked crow, Be gone! And saying this, he turned away from her. But Margarita did not relent and grabbed him by his pants. Grabbed him by his pants. Um, so the young man turned with a stone in his hand and hit her hard on her face and disappeared, leaving her upon the ground. When Margarita opened her eyes again, the snow had ceased falling. The night was silent, but the light was still there. Enveloped by terror, the young girl ran away as far as she could. When she was found in the following morning, her golden hair had turned to white, and her face, once sweet and beautiful, was now 
disfigured by a long scar. Nothing was again heard of Lucian, and no one ever ventured in the woods again. That's a stupid story. <laughs> That's a pretty crap story. Uh, the Seventh Maker's Way, curious. What does that mean? Alright. Broken door. So we need... Wait a minute, is that water? There's a puddle in here. A pool of stagnant water, perhaps formed after a rainstorm. Tell me, what do you fear? I don't really fear anything. Ah, uh, there used to be a painting here, but it's gone. Soft roots, some roots. They seem soft and easy to cut. What is this? Wheel? Chain? Chain is linked to some mechanism. No idea what that means. Uh, there's a puddle and... What is... What is this though? A slot in the wall, an ordinary rectangular notch. In the center lies a tiny slot filtering a weak ray of light. Oh, wait. Put the blood in the puddle? What is that? Is that what I'm, what I'm supposed to do? 